Today's sunshine note is titled The Heart of the Matter. I felt like a rag doll in the dryer's spin cycle. Desperate to feel better, I made an appointment with Dr. Law. It's your heart, Dr. Law growled with the compassion of a bulldog. My heart, I questioned. There's no trace of heart trouble in my family. At least examine me. No diagnosis necessary, he snapped. It's your heart. My heart has never given me problems. But my feet? Oh boy, there's the problem. They have taken me to liquor stores and nightclubs. And it's your heart. Doctor, please check out my hands. These lousy, dysfunctional hands have rolled dice, played cards, filled mugs with beer. There's the problem, I insisted. It's not your hands, it's your heart. At least examine my ears. They have listened to dirty jokes and gossip and profanity and enough rock and roll to kill the Rolling Stones. It's your heart. There's plenty of other doctors in the city, I storm. For the next 10 months, I bounced from doctor to doctor to doctor, faithfully performing every prescription, yet never feeling healthy. Doctor Religion prescribed a regimen of baptism, church attendance, and tying. Doctor Diet blamed my eating habits and suggested a menu of tofu, tree bark, and garden burgers. Dr. Beagood stripped my rings and bracelets off me and helped me stop going to movies. While every doctor promised a cure, nothing could quiet the gnawing emptiness that ached within. In despair, I turned to Dr. Law. It's your heart, were his first words. He hadn't changed his diagnosis. Yeah, yeah, I barked. So what do I do? You need a heart transplant. Glad it's nothing serious. My cynicism leaked like poison. Heart transplant or death, his words cut like a scalpel. Okay, I'll let you do the operation. Okay, I don't operate, Dr. Law replied. That's what I have a partner for. Follow me. He led me across the hall to Dr. Grace's office. Are you ready for the operation, Dr. Grace asked kindly. I... not really. Relax, I have never lost a case. Okay, but give me a couple doses of anesthetic. Oh no, he chuckled. I want you awake for this so you can tell others about it. Even my toenails sweat as he made the first incision. Suddenly the odor of a symphony of skunks filled the room. He, you, I grabbed a pillow to breathe through. What is that disgusting smell? It's your heart. My heart? You can smell the dirty jokes and the gossip and the pornography they've all collected here in your heart. I guess I really do need a new heart. By the way, what does a heart cost these days? I haven't seen any heart sales lately. Twenty-six million dollars, he said without looking up. Twenty-six million dollars? Um, at fifty bucks a month, how long will this take to pay for? You'll never pay for it, he laughed. A friend has taken care of it for you. Making his final stitch, Dr. Grace looked up. There, how does that feel? I feel better already, I said. You'll feel even better with exercise. Exercise? Dr. Law and I are firm believers in exercise. Like what other doctors prescribed? In a sense, Dr. Grace said. Exercise is critical, but only after you have addressed the heart of the matter, which is a matter of the heart. My mind swirled like a tornado about the friend who paid for my new heart. Can I meet him? Most certainly, Dr. Gray smiled. Oh, but be prepared. In order to give you a new heart, his was crushed. So don't be surprised by the ugly scar in his side. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Have a blessed day.